So I've done some videos on stress and you can look for those uh, here as well. But today we're going to talk a little bit more specifically. We're going to elaborate on the sympathetic portion of that autonomic nervous system just to see a little bit more detail on, on what it's affecting. The autonomic nervous system is what this part of the nervous system that handles everything that you don't have to think about. So beating your heart and digesting food and, and growing nails and so forth, pumping blood, regulating blood pressure, all of that is done for you by your autonomic nervous system. And there's two branches. One is called the parasympathetic that slows things down and the other is called the sympathetic which is sort of like an accelerator and that's what we're going to talk about today. It is very much like an accelerator in the car because these two systems they work opposite each other. So the sympathetic is like the accelerator and the parasympathetic is like the brake. You can only do one at a time. Okay? You can't speed up and slow down at the same time. Depending on what you do with your pedals, your, your car is going to do one or the other. And the body works exactly the same way. So it's like a seesaw. And the more that you fire off your sympathetic or your fight flight, the more you're going to turn the parasympathetic off. So it's not like a switch but it's a gradual thing. It's like a percentage thing. For every percent that you increase your sympathetics, you decrease the parasympathetics by 1%. And that's because it's a resource allocation system. We only have so much blood, there's only so much resources in the body, and this system determines where is it most important to send it right now in this moment, depending on what's going on around us. So fight flight is exactly what it sounds like. It's about defending, it's about danger, stress, defending yourself, it's situations where you have to fight or run. So what it means, it has to rev things up, it has to speed things up to make available resources to make that happen. The first thing that happens is that you detect a danger or you, something makes you feel stressed and then your body releases adrenaline. That's the primary stress hormone, the fastest stress hormone. So now your heart rate increases so you can pump more blood because the blood is going to provide energy so you can fight or run. You breathe faster. You start hyperventilating essentially and that's to bring in more oxygen so that the blood can carry more oxygen and more fuel out to the body parts to do the work. Your blood pressure increases. Uh, your blood vessels constrict, called vasoconstriction, because in a tighter blood vessel the blood moves faster. So the, the blood can get out faster uh, to the peripheral body parts, to the muscles that are going to do the work. You increase muscle tension because you preload the muscles, like instantly there's something to defend against, then instantly you have that muscle tension so you're ready to act and do the work. And it works differently above the waist or below the waist. So above the waist you preload the muscles on the front of the body. On below the waist you preload the muscles on the back of the body. And that makes a lot of sense because this is for protection, this is about fighting, and on the back it's about pushing off and, and running. So what you can notice from this also then is when people are stressed, they tend to pull their shoulders up. They, that's to protect the, the neck and the head. They tend to bite down their teeth, they tend to clamp their jaw down, so to protect the, the jaw from dislocating. They tend to roll their shoulders in. They tend to turn their palms backwards. So a stress posture looks very much like, like this, and I'm exaggerating of course. And of course a lot of, of pain and tension comes, comes from that. You're going to increase some parts of your immune system and decrease others. So you're going to increase the part of the immune system that helps you, the, the blood-based immune system, to help clotting because in a fight you're more likely to get a wound. If the, the tiger comes after you and, and gets a claw on you or if you have to run through some thorny bushes then you might start bleeding 
and you don't want to bleed to death until before you've had a chance to, to run to safety. So your body tries to prevent that and increase the blood clotting. Part of that blood clotting is cholesterol. So your body's going to upregulate LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol. But it's not bad because it's there, it's being produced and distributed just in case there's a wound so you can help close that. Your cell-mediated immune system is going to decrease because your body says, you know, that, that food you ate five minutes ago, I'm not so concerned about defending against bacteria or digesting food. Right now, I'm concerned about that threat out there. So the short-term immune system, the blood clotting and cholesterol is going to increase, but the cell-mediated your white blood cells that fight off infections and antibodies, etc., uh, they're gonna, that's going to decrease. Your cortisol is going to increase. And today everyone sort of thinks of cortisol as a bad thing, but again, there's a balance to everything. And cortisol, the purpose of cortisol is to raise blood sugar. So whenever your body senses that it has to rev things up through flight flight, it anticipates needing more energy, so it starts making cortisol right away, so that it has that energy available through blood sugar. And then your body reprioritizes your brain resources. So the frontal lobe is where you normally think and evaluate abstract thought, creativity, planning, etc. But during fight flight, there is very little need for that. So the body says, I'm going to take the blood from the frontal lobe. I'm going to send it down to the brainstem where you have your reflexes, where you have your, your primitive, your automated behavior. In taking the blood away from the frontal lobe, you lose focus, etc. Et so now, let's look at, so all of these things the body does on purpose in a fight-flight response. So let's look at what the physiological effects, what are the symptomatic effects of this if it goes on long terms. So all, all of these responses are for short term and they can save a life, but long term this increased heart rate leads to arrhythmias and heart palpitations. The blood pressure of course is hypertension which can be very destructive if it gets very high. Muscle tension results in spasms. So now we can have neck pain and shoulder pain as a result from this constant tension. On the lower body, we can have hip problems, knee problems, sciatica. The blood clotting re leads to increased risk of stroke. The increased cholesterol is associated with cardiovascular disease. The reduced right blood cells leaves us more vulnerable to infections. The increased Cortisol is going, to dis, is going to create stress, it makes tissues more fragile, and it causes abdominal fat deposits. Decreased blood flow to the frontal lobe results in decreased focus and concentration, increased anxiety, increased chronic pain, ADD, etc., etc. So I know what you're saying now. You're, you're thinking, well, he said that the body is smart, he said the body does this all on purpose, then why would the body create all these problems if it's on purpose? Why doesn't it just do something different? Because the system has kept us alive in emergencies. It's designed for short-term bursts of activity. It saves our lives in those situations, but it was never designed for the way we're using it today. It's not just triggered. The sympathetic nervous system isn't just triggered by bears and lethal emergency threats. It is also triggered by anything that gets you tense or frustrated or upset or angry or irritated or overwhelmed. And it can also be triggered from postural things, from sedentary lifestyles and from, from chemical insult as well. So because we have more of all of those than we've ever had before, we're getting just a little bit of stress. We're getting a little bit of activation all the time. So we end up with a sympathetic dominance in a system that was designed to have an, an kind of an all or nothing activation. We kind of fired off a little bit 
all the time and it's not designed for that. So that's why the chronic activation of that system leads to all of these different diseases and disease conditions. So look at some of the other videos to learn about how to reduce the stress and how to combat this and how to balance your body through holistic health. Pretty much every video on this channel relates to these topics in, in some way. So the more that you watch, the more you'll start getting the whole picture. Please share these videos so that people understand how devastating stress can be and how it's all part of a normal physiology, that it's not the body that's wrong, it's we have to change something about our lifestyle to give the body a chance to rebalance. If you're new to this channel and you enjoy this sort of content where you learn about the body, how it really works, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so we can keep this content coming your way. And as always, thanks for watching.